So, I don't know what it's like in you know, various parts of the country, but uh, it's very warm here. So remember to drink, always very important. Take sips of water whenever the regular intervals. Um, even though what we're doing is mostly very slow, you can still easily dehydrate. Um, and mostly, so I believe, um, when you get thirsty, some people say that you're already on the way to dehydration. So sipping water, particularly while you're moving around, is, 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 is a great idea in weather like this. But hopefully you're managing to stay at a reasonable temperature. We'll start off with our, <laughs> our warm up, which is hardly necessary for, us, for, for those of us in Cambridge. But remember, warm up is a slight misnomer. Um, it's really a preparation for exercise. So think first of all a little bit about your stance. Remember that the Tai Chi stance that we take, and I'll give you the details in a moment, I'm unclear of those, but one of the sort of aims, I suppose you could call it, or one of the consequences is that it actually creates a bit of space in the body. That space allows heat to release. And it also allows the blood and the energy to circulate. And the blood circulating is part of your body's cooling mechanism. So getting the posture right and moving gently can be a way of, of, of cooling off, of losing some of that heat that gets kind of stuck in the body. And the Chinese term, the term in Chinese medicine is that it, it, it stagnates. Um, and that's a, a, a condition that is often seen in, according to Chinese medicine in this part of the world. And it's quite descriptive if you think about it, that stagnant feeling that you can't move and you go, your mind's dead and so on and so forth. And one book I read on these arts said very simply that a moving river doesn't stagnate. So this little bit of movement can help to release that. So your feet below your hips, and shuffle that around a little bit as, as you wish. Toes pointing forward as much as possible, let me just come forward, so there, or they slightly turned out. My feet tend to drift out to, 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 to that, but as so long as you're maintaining the overall line of the body, so hips facing forwards, shoulders facing forwards, knees facing forwards, toes facing forwards. So you're not twisting yourself up. That's really what you want. All of these things are processes. We build towards a kind of ideal of posture, recognizing that, in fact, there's no such thing. There's where we are and there's room for improvement and change. And always very carefully, very slowly, very gently. Never asking your body to maintain a position that is clearly uncomfortable. So even if the textbooks say this is what should be happening, if it doesn't feel right for your body, then don't force yourself into it. Consider it, but don't force yourself. Your weight slightly forwards, if that's comfortable for you. And if I exaggerate that, you'll see that's the tendency. And so our response is just, well, our response could be wrong. We quite often do this. We pull our shoulders back, which is horrible for the back. But if we can just get that gentle sitting back, letting go a little bit, softening in your, your knees, then it brings us to the upright position. It helps to drop our center of gravity. Don't forget, we have the pelvis hanging. And again, that feeling of space, allowing for a little bit of movement so that this movement, just turning gently from the hips. What you want to feel is that if you were standing outside and there was a slight breeze, eventually you want to get to the point where your response to that breeze would be like, like a leaf on a tree, just bending to it slightly, yielding to it, to be determined. 
that we use in Tai Chi. And that approach, that mindset, if you like, a, a kind of softer mindset, perhaps, than we normally associate with exercise, is one that we want to carry through, through the whole practice. So you know, if you're a bit tight in your shoulders or stiff in your back or something like that, the same yielding approach, water flowing, eroding away the tightness, the, the, the stiffness, rather than thinking, well, I'm going to push through this. Areas that are painful, treated in the same way. If something continues to be painful, if there's no sense of it easing, then obviously you, know, you need to think about your posture. It may be that with a particular movement, it's not it's, it's not a, a, a good movement for you at this point, or you need to think about adapting the movement. I'm very happy to answer questions on things like that. You can always email me, we can chat about it. And then just raise your arms and stop. So we're looking to cultivate that movement within our bodies in terms of the physical movement we're making, the circulation, the blood, but perhaps more subtly a sense of the movement itself, the energy within the body beginning to move harmoniously. And let your hands drop. So just rocking your weight forwards and backwards. Again, if I come a little bit closer so you can see, and if I exaggerate the movement, when I go forwards, eventually my heels will come off the ground, my toes. That pulling forward starts around about here. There's just that sense that the body's starting to, to strain and around about here for me, maybe slightly different for you. Those of you who've been doing this for a while, you get a little bit more movement, just try and let go a bit more in, in your hips and you can start to just increase the range of your movement gently. Looking for that central point, a balance point, a midpoint, a point of equilibrium, however you care to think about it. And again, as you get used to this, Obviously, there's a technical side to this, but it's also what we might think of as a, an intuitive element, since it feels right, you kind of feel into the place. And then just settle down. And this attention to the body also helps to just draw our thoughts in, to quieten our thoughts down, to draw away from all the various things that we're busy with, not they're bad things, just a little bit of space from them. So space within body and in mind as well. Now letting your hips drop back a little bit more. And this should very much be your hips dropping back, not your knees going forwards. That will pull you over. It will also strain your knees. Remember, you need to build up with this. So don't push yourself down artificially, let gravity pull you down and let your legs tell you when to, to come up again. Another thing to think about in the warmer weather that we're experiencing, joints will swell a little bit, so you may not get quite as much movement. Muscles will swell, you, may, that you just may not get the same performance out of them. All of these things show that we're very much connected to what's happening in the outer environment. And in the same way, if we push up and breathe in, we expand, we draw air in from the outer environment, we breathe out into it. And we're subject to the sort of the energies and the movements outside of ourselves as well as within ourselves. And all of that is something that eventually we want to try and just develop a sense of harmony around. 
So then letting your centre of gravity drop, feeling as though it's pulling you in, into the ground, and let your body just expand away from that, the legs lengthening, your back beginning to lengthen a little bit, and then bring your hands around as though you're cradling the ball, push up, let that expansion through your body create a wave that pushes your arms up, and then sinking down, drawing your arms down. So the root is at the starting point for the movements. If you ride a bike, then you start the pedal by pushing downwards through one of the pedals. If you jump on a trampoline, you drop down before you come up again. Birds, when they go to take off, push down against the ground to get a little bit of lift and so on and so forth. So uh, when we walk, we push into the ground. So th again, these are all very natural processes for us. Easy and gentle. And then change into the wild goose. Same action through your legs and hips and back, but with a feeling of the movement coming up a little bit higher in your body. There are two ways we can view these movements. If we think about our arms moving and then see how our body is responding to that, where we feel the resonance of the movement, that is looking from the outside in. And let's refer to Tai Chi and Qigong as Wei Dan, external view, external practice. As we get used to those internal patterns, we start to see it from the other way around. We, we begin the movement by trying to generate those internal patterns that move the arms through us. Nidad, internal practice. And really, both elements are part of the system. The Nidan tends to be something that we build into the practice as we get more experience, but that doesn't mean that we should ignore the external element. It's just really about where we feel the movement generated. And then, part in the crowds. Again, subtle differences between this and the previous movement. We'll explore that in a, a bit more depth in a few moments. Try not to think in terms of this as a stretch. We open and close. I do one more of these and we're going to string these three movements together. So this will give you a chance just to compare, contrast the different movements. We start with rooting down, just feeling where the sort of main responses are within our body. I'm not going to tell you where I think they ought to be. And then Started in the same way, but where does the movement build to? Where else do you find the movement resonating? Where do you feel the change? And then, once again, building up into the slightly more expansive movement. The names are suggestive, aren't they? Rooting down, 
the disimpression, you know, the root, the tree, and so on and so forth. And then the bird flying a bit more open, perhaps, a bit more high body, perhaps. And then part in the clouds, just gently reaching up into the clouds. So again, it's not just a, a physical response, it's in our mind as well. Do one more round of this. So practicing like this draws your attention deeply into the body. See if you can maintain that, so see to what degree you can maintain that, because nobody keeps it the whole time. Dragon plucks the stars from the sky. The further we expand out in the body and the mind, the more likely we are to sort of lose that internal feel. Doesn't mean we shouldn't expand out because the movement itself contracts in and draws us in. We have these two stages, two elements of each movement expanding, contracting, yang to you. One time on each side. And then pushing in four directions. So again, a bit of a sequence here, doing your back length and Let's do the first and the last of these a couple of times because we have a lengthening in our back and then a broadening. With this, um, with almost all of the movements, our hands stay a little bit in front of our body. And that helps with that broader, longer feeling in our back. So when your hands go out here, Try not to pull them behind. You see, something like my little finger is sort of in line with my shoulder there. There's a few exceptions to that, but they're fairly obvious, and even then, it doesn't go very far. So this time, when you push out, you're turning your hips, your waist, and make sure you can still feel that broad feeling. The whole of your upper body turning gently. Again, if I show you from the side, I'm not twisting my back or pulling my arms back or forwards. I'm turning so that by the depth my hands drop down, you see that you know, when my hips move, my shoulders move. And so my arms will move with, with me. And then Put all four together again. Let's do one more round of this.
and then circle in palms just on one side half circle just in line with the center line of your body and then down almost like you're just brushing your clothes down and again if you notice here my hand is slightly forwards So then after this one, if it's comfortable for you, once again, add the turn. It's quite a strong turn, so you won't be able to get very far. And again, it's not the arm coming across, it's your body turn. So even though some of these movements are quite strong, you can feel a little bit tight if you're not careful. Remember that idea of trying to retain the space within your body. And let that be one of the guides to your movement. Now change sides. And then if comfortable, add in the turn. Remember, as always, it's never the case that bigger movements are necessarily better. And in general, when we're looking to feel those movements within our body, it's better to make smaller movements rather than bigger ones. And then row in a boat in the middle of the lake. Start with just this movement. Sinking down and feel how your pelvis just adjusts as your hips go back. Keeping the pelvis more or less level, keeping the body upright. But if we sort of move into that, as it were, and tilt the pelvis forward, our head goes forwards, and then coming upright should in theory, it's very simple, just letting your hips drop back, feeling almost of your head floating up. So this is this lovely idea of a, of a not an effortless, but a very smooth, unstrained movement into the upright position. And with that, your arms following. Very careful with your knees, very careful with your back. Remember, I try and do these movements quite big so you can see what I'm doing. And it's not necessarily the case that you should be moving. One more time. And then stand. Shake. Okay. I would never suggest that we don't want to try to move further, but it's a question of how we do that. One of my main teachers uses a a saying that he got from one of his Chinese teachers, which is that small movements are better than big movements. No movement is better than small movement. If you're not careful, you just stay in bed, don't you? <laughs> um, really what that's talking about is how we build things up. Those small movements, those small changes within the body are very connected to, to the mind. The image I sometimes, example I sometimes give to people is goose pimples. 
and you know, if, if I said to you, hold your hand out and get some, produce some goose pimples on your hand, you wouldn't be able to do it. But if, if, if you, you, you heard somebody tell, tell a chilling story or you, know, I, I know you, you, you read something about what it was like in the Antarctic in the middle of winter, if it was a good description, then that would provoke a response within, within you and you'd start to get, get goose pimples. It's Pavlovian. So when you know, we use images or images are used, used for us, different aspects of the mind, not just imagery, all, all sorts of things, we get physical responses. And think of those physical responses as being like the bricks that you build a house with. There's no question that we want to build the house. We want to get those bigger movements. But do we do, we do it by straining or do we build up the bricks using the mind and the smaller movements to, 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 to build up? And when we start Tai Chi, that's obviously quite difficult because we, we start, you know, we learn about that through, through, through practicing the, the art. Um, but it's, it, it's something that we train ourselves to do. And that's where this, Wei Dan, external practice, and Nai Dan, internal practice, come into play. You will find that some people have different exercises, Wei Dan exercises, Nai Dan exercises. I prefer to think of them as more a change in our awareness so we could get a sense for the differences within the same movement. You know, sometimes just deliberately switch from one to, to the other. So, Begin to just transfer your weight and think of this as a, a gentle compression of a leg. I, I mentioned the image of the trampoline a few moments ago. Trampoline or bouncy castle. And so you know, if, you, if you find yourself having access to either of those and you start to play on them, People think you're being frivolous. Just point out to them that you're trying to study advanced Tai Chi and would they just go away and leave you on your own? Because if, if, if you do this on something like a bouncy path, if you move across, you will start to feel the push back up. And that's the that's the whole of the structure of the of, of the of the bouncy castle. The material is stretching, there's the pressure of the the, the air and so on and so forth. Lots of little things that combine to push you up. And in the same way, there's lots of things. There's changes in the muscles, there's a bit of pressure or dent, pressure is the wrong word, there's a filling up of the bones, and and so on and so forth. And you get to a point where the legs just push you back. In Tai Chi, this is sometimes described as filling and emptying. So what you don't want to do is like filling a glass up with water. You don't want to overfill because everything spills out. So we'll see and later in the class, this had a very, very practical element to it. The weight transfer is an essential part of our mobility. So you can move across a little bit, but then the rest of the movement is very much these internal movements, that, that sense of, the feeling of the hips dropping down, not necessarily, again, the, the hips moving any further, that yeah, may do, but you may not be able to manage that. But you should still be looking to feel the pull of gravity through your body and whether you're just tightening up against that and whether you can actually release that. And gradually, more of your weight will go into the foot through the foot. I should warn you, if you start to do that, it's surprising how strong it is in your legs. You could do this and think, oh yeah, I can let go of my hips and my back, and isn't that nice? And then you wake up the next day and you're sort of going, oh, what have I done? And it's because you're, you're, you're now conditioning your body in quite an unusual way. So. As always, do go very carefully. And what we'll do is we'll build into hitting the ball in front of the shoulder. So having done all of that, you move across, you settle in, 
you let your heel come up and you move across a little bit more and then you turn and then same thing on the other side you'll probably find that your foot turns out a little bit here that's that's fine we'll correct that when we need to but it's fine for the moment and again the turning movement isn't your shoulder twisting forwards or anything like that it's you're turning on a supporting leg you're swiveling your pelvis around and that's carrying the shoulders right? you go across you raise the heel you swivel around i'm exaggerating this by the way my, my knees are pulling slightly out of line but, I'm, but i want you to see this movement in the body So then, have your hands in front of you. And I'll show you with this hand first of all. All that's going to happen is, as you move across, this push from the leg pushes this hand up, and you just extend the arm like a cat's paw extending out. Turn your hand, palm down, draw your hand back. Oops, get in the right position. Turn, do the same thing on the other side. So the main sort of active movement for your arm is the extension from your shoulder to your fingers. It's your leg and your hip that pushes the hand up. The energy, if you like to think of it like that, comes from the ground. And then move through your upper body. Remember, we noticed changes and movements earlier through the body. So by the time it reaches your hand, Quite a powerful movement already and then you just express that you direct it and shape it through well two things really one is through the image and the image here is you're hitting the ball up so there's a, a clear action there and through that responsiveness of your body and particularly your arms now to that idea to that image Again, this is a very natural thing to do. When you finish the class, you decide to go and put the kettle on, make a cup of tea. Then you won't need to think, oh, right, the kettle's there, so now I need to do this with my hand and then this with my fingers. It's a conditioned response, born partly by memory. What we get is quite a, a powerful movement. The image is it's a strong image, the one that's in the ball. It's important not to strain in your shoulder because we have this rotation here. And come back to check out. Now, take one step forwards. Hip width, and at the beginning, the same in length as you're able to sink down more comfortably, maybe a little bit longer, so that you can comfortably transfer your weight. If this were a very long step, then eventually you'll be really straining. So um again there's a technical side to this but there's also that says yeah this is, this is how i can comfortably get 60 percent of my weight into the front leg 70 percent back and again it's filling and emptying notice how your body is responding to the change. Is there resistance there? Can you let go of that resistance? And remember, 
always, you know, you might find it easier to investigate that, holding on to something. What can I do? How can I do this? So the percentage of weight leaves a fair amount of weight in the other leg, what we would refer to as the empty leg. So from here, it's quite difficult to take a step. There are exercises, incidentally, where you can do something like you go to here and then you just pull. That's, that's, that, that, that's interesting. But that's not what we're going to do. What we're going to do is when you go back, let this front hip drop down a little bit more and that will automatically pull your toes up and you'll set back into the fat leg a little bit more. Have the front foot turned down. And when you go forwards, let this hip drop and the knee push forwards and that will bring your heel up. So we begin to get more weight going into the supporting leg by letting the hips drop, by allowing the hips to drop more with the pull of gravity. Not straining against gravity, not straining to move the leg, but just letting gravity pull us down and making sure it works properly through our body the way that we want it to. So eventually we get to a point where we get to here and then we can just pull on the leg, bring it in, push out, put the ball of your foot down, heel down, push gently as though you're just pushing on soft sand, come back, raise your toes, same thing here, contracting your leg in and then out. If you're finding this tricky, by the way, what you could do is just drag your toes along the floor and out a few times so that you work out what it is that brings the foot in, because it's not the shoulders or the back. And then eventually you just raise your toes up, raise your heel up. And the foot at the moment is quite low to the ground. So the final part of this is to raise the foot up higher. And that's a simple rotation of your hip shouldn't involve tilting the pelvis. Don't worry if you didn't get all of that, by the way. There's, there's a thing on YouTube now on the, on, on the YouTube channel looking at stepping, going through the same kind of processes. But also, it really, that awareness comes out of that inward focusing. So it, it's an ongoing process. But once you start to practice looking inside the body, feeling inside the body, being aware of what's going on, then little things like, oh yeah, the hip dropping a little bit more, become clearer to you. So um, you can see how these ideas start off almost kind of quite esoteric. Um, but this, this moves us towards, towards a, a, a better quality of walking. So try that on the, the, the other side. So this is a shorter than normal step. So it's not a direct translation to how we would normally walk. But what it does do is make us aware and enable us to work on elements involved in standard walking that are often missed and that we often find are actually quite quite um quite, quite poor in quality little changes in the hips and the pelvis and the pelvic floor things that um as we grow older do tend to get lost So then you let the hip drop down, toes come up, turn the toes out. I like to have the toes a little bit turned out here. Hip drops down. Yeah. So you go from maybe 70% in the back leg to 75 and then gradually to 80, 90, 95. By the time you get to 90 or 95, there's actually very little weight left in the supporting leg. Again, remember, 
it's a handy wall or a chair, you can use that for support. But just when you're ready, step in or slide in the foot in. And if you're comfortable with this, bring the foot in and step forward, take a couple of steps forward. You plant the foot with that, move the weight. Step. My feet are going to disappear, but they're still there. And then going back. So that listening to the body, that deep listening to, to, to the body, gives us, takes us to a very practical element. You know, it helps our walking. How much more practical can you, can you get? We're still thinking about you know, looking at these things and um, you know, maybe just sort of slow walking. It's a really good way to bring your attention in. So it's a walking meditation as much as anything else. It's a benefit to both mind and body. The more you can rest your, your, your attention in your body, the more of the sense of space that you've got there. And um, to be honest, it's much easier to deal with the business out there if, if, if you've got that space at the, the center. So um, again, mind and body really benefits from this. Now, have your, oh, I have one foot forms, actually it doesn't matter which foot Let's go into fisherman cast again. When we bring our arms into the movement, once again, we can hit a problem, which is that our arms will easily dominate the movement. From the side, I try and let my arms just swing through. And this is an occasion when for a few moments here, your hands will be behind your hips as your body builds up the energy to pull them forwards. But watch what happens. If I artificially move my hands out there, can you see how my shoulders are now coming forwards? And eventually I would fall forwards. So again, rather than thinking, you know, having this idea that your hands should get to a certain point. Think about what's going on within your body as much as you can and see where that wave like movement sends your hands to. At what point does the movement forwards change to the reverse and so on? Remember, you know, to get more movement, it's the opposite of what we think. It's not straining, it's letting go in the hips, letting the shoulders relax. More space in the body will allow more movement, both internally and externally. Straining will restrict that space. One more time, and then pushing a wave or pushing the boat.
check it out. And on the other side, so fisherman cast a net is a, a great exercise for exploring these ideas because it's so very straightforward. It's also rather lovely. And we can really take the, take the time to sort of step back in our minds to observe responses within our body, maybe encourage some change in that. And then pushing a wave. And then check out. <clears throat> so what we're going to do now is we're going to do this movement, which uh, most of you have done with me before at some point or another. We do wind blows to willows, and then we gradually move the feet and we step in and back. This this is a transition into a move called dragonfly skims the, the water. And there are several ways we, we can do this. Please be careful with this, by the way. Um, when I was developing this for, for, for myself, and truth to tell, even occasionally now, when I'm, when, when, when I'm doing this, I, I quite regularly find myself falling over. It's quite soft where I practice, so it's okay, I don't mind. I'm, 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 I'm kind of used to it. But it is, it is quite a tricky set of movements. We can step in like this. And this is the way to start. But then what we can do, we can begin to change. Again, as before, you can raise your, your foot a little bit, if that's comfortable. And again, hold on to something or whatever. Um, we can also raise and at the same time, rotate the hip. So when you rotate the hip, make sure you don't do this, because that's when you fall over. I'm not going to demonstrate the falling over. So you could do it like this. And some of you will know because you've been in classes with me that this also builds into, um, I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate it, I will go out of view a little bit here, I go forwards. It can be a forward step in movement so you can combine it with that step in. And we'll do a little bit of that. But only if you're comfortable doing it. And then going back, see there, I just managed to Stop myself falling over. It, it always happens. It's a tricky exercise. Yeah. So take it to whatever point you're comfortable with. Don't be in a hurry. Remember, this is absolutely not a competition to see who falls over the most or anything or, 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 or anything like that. What's important isn't whether you can do fancy movements standing on one leg. This is not a practical stance. You don't stand around in the supermarket chatting to people like this. You don't walk down the road. Well, I don't anyway. So and, you know, even if it feels awkward, it doesn't mean you're, that, that you're not benefiting from it. And, you, know, you might have the long term goal of wanting to do the full movement and that's fine. But make sure that you build it slowly. So I'll, stop. I'll, I'll have my back to you because it'll be easier for you to follow. Have your left foot forwards. And first of all, wind blows the willow. Sink into your back foot, turn to your left, and let that movement swing your arms out. Remember, don't be straining in your arms. Go forwards, turn to the right, 
Think of the willow tree. Deep roots, supple wood. Oh, an image often used actually in these arts, particularly when people are referring to the martial element of it. Willow wood is strong and supple. Transfer the weight, settle down into the supporting leg. You move, first thing you get should be a sense of sinking. And then you turn. It's the first thing we always do in Tai Chi, we find the ground, get a sense of the ground beneath our feet, our roots. And only then do we try and move out. So if when you're ready, that's when you also begin to raise your heel and your toes. And you may find that the turning helps with that. Remember, you're letting go in the supporting head. And then you can start to bring the foot in if you're ready. Don't let me rush you. If it suits you, you can lift the leg. Each stage is valuable. And then again, being very careful, rotating the hip a little bit. It's quite strong on the tendons around the hip. So I don't know the There's a story I sometimes say to, 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 to my groups about this exercise, circling palms. When I, when I learned it, I learned it as this. And I was doing it in a class one day and people were doing it very badly. So I stopped them because I thought they were going to hurt themselves. And I said, let's just do it like this. And the moment I did that, I suddenly realized that I'd been missing elements of the movement so concerned with going down in these big movements that i was missing some of the subtleties of the movement so i started to practice it like this and then one day i was teaching a group and they were still doing well different group they're doing it wrong they were concerned they were going to hurt themselves so i said let's do this without the turn and i found myself thinking well, that's interesting i've never noticed that about that movement before so it isn't always the, it isn't necessarily the case that this is better than this or even better than this <laughs> yeah. each, each each sort of stage of the movement has has it has important elements to, to, to it so don't 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 be in a hurry to to move on so your right foot forwards and sink into your back foot turn and be careful not to twist your back or your legs wind blows the willow expanding expanding It's in your own time, but I'm going to start raising my toes and my heel. And then stepping in. Uh, 
maybe lifting the leg a little bit higher. Putting the toes down so that just for a moment here, you can stabilize yourself. And then if it's comfortable for you, And then, whichever way you're doing this, again, only if it's comfortable for you, step back. Turn towards the front foot. Bring the front foot in, in whichever way suits you. Step back. Same thing again. Turn towards the front foot. Bring the foot in. Step forwards. Sink into the front foot. Turn to raise the heel. Bring the foot in, whichever way you wish. Bring it back. So you can develop that in your own time to, to whatever to a point is, is, is appropriate to you. Um, having a wall is quite handy. I can't, so I could, for instance, do this. Just keep my hand on the wall. Oh, that's nice. And then I can turn. Um, then maybe, that, maybe that helps you to, to think about the, 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 the leg. As I've said before, there's nothing wrong with using the environment around you in one way or, or Okay, so rubbing your hands together. Tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. Down to one shoulder. On the side. Lightly on your back. Your hips. Belly again, quite light on your belly. Okay. So, if some of that detail escaped you, which it probably did, nobody can absorb all of, all of that. Remember, this will go up. This the the, the film of this um, session will go up on YouTube soon, so you can always revise it. I'm also planning to put a more detailed thing for Dragonfly Skin to Water, Moon Blows to Willows. Up there soon. So, you know, if it's an exercise that attracts you, um, then 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 you can make a particular study of it. It is a lovely exercise. It's, it has this. It has a great feel to it when it when 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 you're not wobbling around. It feels wonderful. Um, but it's also very very good for for balance and movement. Um, so you know, it's 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 worth working at. But you're, as I've said, go go nice and careful. So coming back to standing, finding your posture, getting that sense of your root, your thought settling, centering, feeling again that little bit of space in your body, your mind, sinking down, embrace tiger, return to that. Coming back. This image of the mountain, stillness and strength. Just be comfortable with the, anything that you've picked up today, anything that you've learned is there. What you haven't is fine, you'll get another chance to pick that up at some point or another. 
this is that sort of slowing down allows you to copy absorb whatever it is you picked up. It's more. And less. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care of yourself. Look after yourself in, in the heat. Remember to drink. Very important. Drink. Very important to drink water. Whatever else you drink. By all means, have a cup of tea and a few beers. But I do. <laughs> Um, but, but, but water is the thing that will really help you, help you to deal with it. Mm -hmm. so thank you very much. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Yeah, thank bye. you, Mike. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. See you all soon. Bye. Thank you.